Welcome to Game Hacking 101, the very first video in the GHS hacking series. And in this video, I'll show you how to get set up to start hacking games right away. Now to be clear, I'm referring to computer game hacking, and for that you'll obviously need a computer and some games. And assuming you have that, let's get into how to get the next most important thing you'll need to get started with game hacking, a free game enhancement program called Cheat Engine. And sure, as the name implies, you can use Cheat Engine to, well, cheat in PC games. But I like to think of it as placing the control of your gaming experience in your hands, whether that means making games more difficult or making them a whole lot easier. So with all that said, let's head to CheatEngine.org, which is the only place I recommend getting a free version of Cheat Engine. So to get started, the first thing we'll want to do is click on the giant green download button. Now if you're on Mac, clicking the giant green download button will bring you to this page, and you'll need to scroll down a bit and hit this link to start the download. But if you're on Windows, like me, clicking the download button should start the download right away. Now, as you can see, my antivirus is flagging Cheat Engine as a virus and blocking the download. But before you panic, Cheat Engine is not a virus. But it sometimes gets confused as a virus because it gives us the ability to make changes to other programs in our computer, which is kind of like a virus, but the key difference is we control everything that Cheat Engine does. So I'll just go and turn my antivirus off and then click the giant green download button again, and this time it should get downloaded with no issues. And all right, once downloaded, start the installation process, but take your time and keep an eye out for the optional unnecessary software that you get offered and decline it. And that's it for installing Cheat Engine. Now, if you're having issues launching Cheat Engine on Windows, it could be that you have reputation-based protection turned on. And to check that, just come down here and type in reputation-based protection, then just click on it and check to see if it's enabled. But alright, assuming that you've got everything working, you should see the Cheat Engine icon on your desktop. And if you're on Windows, I recommend you right click the icon and go down to Properties, then click Compatibility, and then click inside the square next to Run This Program as an Administrator, and then click OK. And this will make sure that Cheat Engine has access to what it's supposed to when we get ready to start hacking games. So with that done, let's open Cheat Engine and head to Settings where we'll make a few changes. Alright, so first in the General Settings tab, check the square next to Show All Windows in the Taskbar. Then head over to Hotkeys. And I'll be adding hotkeys to a few of these functions that I'll be using quite a bit throughout the series. And later in the series, I'll explain what each of these do as we actually start using them. And to add the hotkeys, I'm just clicking on a function to highlight it, then I'm clicking in the hotkey box, and then hitting one or more keys on my keyboard. And you can set the hotkeys to whatever you want, but try to avoid using keys that are common in the kind of games that you'll be hacking. Now, if you make a mistake and hit a wrong key, you can just come over, hit clear, and then assign a new hotkey. And okay, if you downloaded the latest version of Cheat Engine, you should see this extra custom type submenu. And if you plan on using Cheat Engine with emulated games, you'll want to go ahead and check these boxes. Then head down to scan settings. And first thing, click inside the box next to pause while scanning on by default. Then head down here and place a check mark next to all the entries. But unless you're working with an emulator, you can leave all custom types unchecked. Now head on down and click inside the square right here, and then click on this little folder. And what we're doing is changing where Cheat Engine will place all the temporary files it generates when we hack games. And we're doing that because these files can build up over time and take up some serious space in your system if you don't delete them every so often. And if you plan on using Cheat Engine with emulators, head down and place a check mark here. And alright, for the last change, head to Debugger Options, and under Debugger Method, change it to use the VEH Debugger, which I find works the best for most games. Now we just need to click OK at the bottom to save the changes we made, and we're done. And alright, in the next video, we'll explore how to actually use Cheat Engine to start hacking games. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and turn notifications on so you don't miss it. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.